Hi everyone. Today we're going to take a look on how a blockchain networks behave in cloud container environment. It's by increasing observability and maintainability of these networks. We're going to use technologies such as Kubernetes for our cloud container platform. For the blockchain protocol, we're going to use Hyperledger Fabric. And for the metrics and polling service, Prometheus and Grafana for taking observability to this blockchain. Before getting our hands into the matter, let me introduce myself for a bit. I'm Pau, I'm working as a DevOps engineer here in Allianz Technology Munich, in Germany. Uh, so recently joined uh, to the DVCOC, which is Global Blockchain Center of Competence for Allianz Technology here. And what we're trying to do is to take uh, blockchain technologies from uh, POC stages, proof of concept stages, beyond to real production stages. By doing this, we are working closely with universities, um, enterprises that are working on blockchain space, startups, so we can take this opportunity to across all, uh, all the group for Alliance technology and use these technologies to do um, production stages. Just before getting in our topic, you can go to a chamber you're most interested by looking at the links in the description below the video. Many of the blockchains POC that we came across here uh, are either internally or externally. Normally, you should focus on uh, develop the functionality and when it see if the value that it that it claims to be is actually working. This is okay for POC stages, but we're not on once in the, you taking care of these stages you do not focus very much on how to manage and operate this blockchain network. So this, when you're taking the step from going to uh, POC to production stages, you need to take care of this. For instance, uh, we need to give reliability that our systems are reliable for our customers or our users, such as the service does not get interrupted at any time. So uh, what we're trying to do is uh, gain insights about what is going on and take the right steps to prevent uh, a disaster like uh, an interruption of the services. By doing this, what we gain is uh, reliability to our users and we instead take proactive actions before uh, a, a disaster can occur. Because blockchain is distributed by its nature, you need to take care of a lot of components that, that make part of your blockchain solution. So here in Allianz, we are using a blockchain platform open source, which is um, Hyperledger Fabric, which is a public permissioned um, blockchain platform, uh, mainly focused on enterprise level. This is uh, the private um, solutions for blockchain, which is kind of different from the normal, uh, the public uh, blockchain platforms, which is the uh, Ethereum uh, platform or the well-known Bitcoin. But these networks are focused on uh, crypto, crypto transactions. When you're using private blo uh, blockchain solutions, you're focusing on the, on the transaction of assets and you're using more the uh, feature called smart contracts which uh, gives you ability to program and add as much business logic as you want on your platform. So, how do we maintain and operate these blockchain platforms? First, let's take a look at what these components are needed uh, for deploying our solution. First of all, what I have to say is that the preferred way to deploy and uh, run uh, Hyperledger Fabric components is the use of uh, cloud containers which are based on Docker. So we're going to use a container orchestrator platform to deploy all our needed workload of this blockchain platform. So what we're going to use is I'm going to show you guys uh, with my laptop a simple provision uh, virtual machine with, a, with a, a Kubernetes cluster in there and then we're going to deploy all our workload of the blockchain platform. Now that we have set up all the needed requirements for, um, for what we need to showcase, now let's take a look of how um, Hyperledger Fabric Components work like. Okay, so for what uh, you can see in the image, we have different components to deploy. We have to differentiate two main structures for Hyperledger Fabric. The first one is the ordering service, which is used by all entities for an organization's participant to the network. And the other structure are the peer services which mainly identifies uh, each organization uh, within the blockchain. 
So uh, as this is a permissioned network, uh, at each set of peers identifies uh, an organization that is going to uh, tra make transactions on the network. First of all, the ordering services is a cluster of nodes using the RAF protocol. What you're doing is that uh, every transaction that is uh, committed to the blockchain is final and it's secure. Um, the consensus guarantees that it does not fork any, any, any blockchain. The other services that which are very important and critical on Hyperledger Fabric are the organization peer services. Um, peers are fundamental elements of the network because they host uh, the ledgers and the smart contracts which are called uh, chain codes in Fabric. Ledgers here are maintained using CouchDB service databases, so they are connected to each peer. And we are deploying two sets of, uh, two, com two peers of each uh, organization, such that we have high availability for our, for our network. Uh, also, because it's a, a private permissioned network, so we are having a certificate authority on each organization, so that allow us to identify uh, these organizations throughout all the, all the network. So let's take a look on how these components that I've shown you in the previous image look like in our Kubernetes cluster. We can see all the elements that we have show, uh, showcased before. We have each um, peer services, which has like peer one uh, for each organization, peer zero, which should be in another, yeah, here. Uh, it's going, uh, this, uh, there are two peers identified for each organization. Then we have the order cluster here, which uh, each set of orders have uh, configured and talking to each other using the RAF consensus. And we can, we can also see that we have the couch TVs that are the ledgers of each peer. So this is all deployed in the cloud container services. So um, by having uh, here everything in cloud containers, we can leverage um, the, with the benefits of using Kubernetes and the benefits of using uh, Docker so that we can have a better um, ability to monitor and display all the data that we want to have here. Since Fabric 1.4, Hyperledger Fabric has introduced a new service called Operations Service. This service is capable of emitting metrics in two main formats. Prometheus format and stats day formats. So we are deploying all our blockchain solution in a container cloud environment, such as Kubernetes, as, as, as we are showcasing now. And Prometheus is also focused on this kind of uh, cloud container technologies. So what we've done is to deploy a Prometheus instance server in our uh, Kubernetes cluster. So uh, by doing this, we are defining that all our metrics are going inside the Kubernetes cluster, and we have the deployment right here. So this is the UI for the Prometheus server, and what we're going to use is, um, we're gonna see how much it works. First, we can see the targets. So you define a set of rules on how the Prometheus scripts all the components on your platform using a label from Kubernetes from your Kubernetes cluster. So that's what we're doing here. And so Prometheus is reading all the labels and what, what he's finding is that uh, we define the rule Hyperledger here. And so this is the um, all the list of the components that he has found. So we can see all the orders and also the peers. The service discovery, so it uses the labels. So this is what uh, uh, Prometheus is scraping from all the API from Kubernetes and also is discovering all the, all the components. So in the future, if we want to add a new organization with a new set of peers or, or a new, uh, or a new uh, node for our uh, ordering cluster, we just uh, deploy it and automatically we follow the same set of rules that we have defined this service discovery. Uh, Prometheus is going to uh, scrape automatically the new components. So that's quite a, new, a great feature. So we go into the graph section, we can see how it's uh, behaving. So we can type in, second so going to say execute. We have the console view, which is only takes the values of each one. The graph, it's, uh, it takes a, a bit of more uh, perspective on what's going on. but 
Um, as you can see, it's very limited. You can add new graphs, but um, it's not uh, very, very intuitive and it's very user friendly. As you can see, Prometheus is an interesting option for pulling the metrics, but its UI, its UI is not very good. So what we're going to do is also deploy another instance of another component, which is called Grafana, which is a metrics visualization. It speaks very well. It's very well connected with uh, Prometheus. It understands it natively. So what we're going to do is deploy an instance of Grafana here in our Kubernetes cluster, as you can see here. And once we have up and running, we can access to the UI. So this is uh, our own uh, dashboard that we have made for this uh, Hyperledger Fabric uh, network. As you can see, we have a lot of new metrics, such as the version we are running, the blockchain height, which is the difference between the uh, Genesis block and the last, the last block that's made, how many blocks have been in between. So in this case, we have 25 blocks. The ledger transactions that are residing now uh, currently in our ledgers, the number of peers. And as you can see here, we may, we may have two outages of our net network, but it has recovered uh, perfectly. So we can see how many orders are emitting block, which is the mainly the order zero and order one. We also have if the consensus is reached within our RAF nodes. The uh, RAF leader of each channel, so we are using two channels here in this blockchain. The, val the, the validation latency that is suffering from uh, our, our service node, and also the block cutter duration, which is like how many milliseconds takes the, the, the order of services to cut a new block once new transactions are going through our blockchain. But then we have also to see the observability of our peer services. So what we have here is that the leader of each peer, which is uh, who's taking the lead of each channel. So we have the, the peers zero of each organization taking the lead. Also, the uh, how is the ledger um, uh, processing the times? So we have the processing times of CouchDB ledgers. Once a transaction is committed, how much does it take to get committed to the, to the ledger? the commit duration, and also how are the smart contracts they take a transaction. So as you can see here, we have a um, super cool um, uh, um, dashboard, which showcases we have, we can see all the main uh, features of our blockchain and how it's behaving. So that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed and, uh, this video and I taught you about some side reliability practices applied to a blockchain platform or what uh, a glimpse about how it's working here at Allen's Technology. If this is the latter, you can find our open IT positions in the link in the description below the video. Be sure to check it out. And don't forget to subscribe and like this video and check out the channel for any other videos in the labs, in the Allianz Lab series for any you have missed, you're sure to have great content like this. So until next time, bye.